So you remember the labor supply gives the number of workers who find a job given the matching process. But here we have a one period model. So the people who have a job at the end of the matching process is just the number of people who found a job. How many people have found a job? Well, we know that there is a, a, a mass one of workers who are searching. We know that the probability to find a job is effort times f of theta, so job finding rate per unit of effort. So the number of people who have a job is just e times f of theta, right? Um, so the labor supply here is just going to be L S, and we'll see that labor supply is going to depend on tightness and also on UI. So what is it? Well, it's just going to be effort, but the effort is some optimal effort chosen by the workers, so it's given by the effort supply, which depends on tightness and on UI times f of theta. And that's our labor supply in that case. Okay, uh, so it's it's a little bit different than the usual labor supply, and there are two reasons. One that here we don't have uh, dynamical models, so we don't have looked at a, we don't have to look at a balance flow condition. We just look at the number of people who find a job after this one round of matching. Um, and the second thing that changes, of course, is that now we have this effort that shows up, and the effort is going to uh, be endogenously determined here, and it's going to depend on the tightness of the market and the generosity of UI, because that affects how people search. Okay. And so, what are the key property, the key properties of the labor supply compared to uh, what we had before? Well, uh, so once again, you know, we know that when theta is equal to zero f of theta is equal to zero, so the labor supply is equal to zero, so that's uh, a useful result. What about the um, derivative of the labor supply? Well, we can see here that the derivative of the labor supply with respect to ui that's going to be negative. So when UI is more generous, the labor supply is depressed. Why is that? Well, it's because when UI is more generous, there is less search effort, right? So ES, and therefore, there'll be less supply. So basically, UI depresses labor supply. That's going to be one of the main costs of unemployment insurance. What about the derivative of, of labor supply with respect to tightness? Well, that's going to be positive. So when you have a higher tightness, the job finding rate per unit of effort f of theta goes up, and also the job search effort uh, es goes up. So of course, uh, of course, your labor supply is going to be increasing here too. Okay, so that's exactly like what uh, what we had before. Okay, uh, that's what it is. So now uh, we're in a position to uh, look at the equilibrium in the model with the Y. So the labor market equilibrium, you know, it's going to be exactly as usual. Uh, in equilibrium, it has to be that the labor supply is equal to the labor demand. Uh, so the labor supply, the dependent but now it also depends on UI because UI affects search effort, has to be equal to the labor demand, which depends on theta and also depends on UI. Why does it depend on UI? Because UI may affect the wage that are paid by firm. You know, through bargaining. But nevertheless, you know, once UI is fixed, uh, then there is, you have one equation, and here we have one unknown variable, which is theta, and so theta, the labor market tightness, will be, deter will be determined in equilibrium by the equality between um, supply and demand. Okay, because, and again, if that didn't hold, we know what would happen. People would post vacancy, taking a tightness as given, and then it wouldn't be realized in, in, in practice, and so you know, people would have to adjust their behavior. So the, this equilibrium is the only one in which the tightness that's taken as given when people take uh, 
make their decision about searching and posting vacancies is actually the tightness that's realized, uh, that's realized in practice. So this is our equilibrium that we have. Okay? And of course, there's a very simple representation of the equilibrium, um, as usual, using our labor market diagram. Oh, something I should say, so you can see here we have an equilibrium condition, it determines tightness, but it's parameterized this equation by UI, so it means that implicitly tightness becomes a function of UI here in this model. Okay, and one question we'll, we'll look is whether um, an increase in UI leads to an increase in tightness or a decrease in tightness. So basically we'll look at whether tightness is an increasing or decreasing function of UI and that, that has implication for the design of, uh, of policy.